Um, the local politicians denied it. There was a huge award against Pakistan then um, at the uh, World Bank level. They have struck a deal, and so Barak is pressing ahead with this thing. Antivagasta is out, though, FYI. They're co focusing on the Americas. Phase one, uh, Barak has said, will cost around $4 billion US. However, the feasibility study has not been released. Um, they do, they are saying today that they expect output to begin production at this huge mine in 2028. It's both copper and gold. But of course, political risk, Amber, is on the minds of many investors here. This ain't Timmins, Ontario. Um, if we look at the map, we can see that um, this project is located in, in southern Pakistan, right there in a, a corner poking into Afghanistan and Iran. It is a troubled part of the world, and separatists in Balochistan province ha, are, are reported to have threatened Barak, also to have threatened uh, Chinese miners in Pakistan. So there is going to be political risk. Mark Bristow, the outspoken boss of Barak, has said, well, look at Mexico. they got criminal gangs, but they also have a booming uh, mining industry. In any case, let's get to an analyst now who likes the look of Barrick and Agnico, uh, and, uh, Agnico Eagle. Um, and Barrick, he prefers to Newmont. Uh, we are joined by Martin Predier of Veritas. It's great to see you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Just touch on that mine in Pakistan. I know it's early days. They haven't released the feasibility study. But do you attribute much value to it in your, in your, when you look at the net asset value of Barrick? I think there will be value. I don't have a, a good view right now how much value there will be. Because, so, because we don't have even a feasibility study. Even Barrick doesn't know. They cannot guide you. So I think, yes, it's something very important for the future. And I think uh, Barrick will do well over there. But putting a number is uh, a little bit tricky at this point. Let's get to your assessment on the price of gold. Um, Rising interest rates <clears throat> said by many observers to be good for gold, and you see a pretty steady increase in bullion, not, not manic, maybe 4 to 5% annually to 2025. Yes. Uh, if, if you look at what gold has done the last 20 years, on average has done 9%. On the last 50 years has done 7%. So putting a 5% is really being conservative. I think this year will be more than 5%, uh, the increase in gold. Uh, last year, we had less. So on average, we, we'll, we'll get a little bit closer to that 7-8%. Uh, I think that's, that's uh, quite reasonable. And you know, when you do valuation, you try to be conservative. So I prefer you know, putting something lower and then being surprised on the upside. Of course, no, no asset goes straight up. If you bought yeah. gold in 2011, when it got yeah. up to record highs of about 2,000 bucks, you had some fallow years. Oh, for sure. I, I know it got back up there last year, or sorry, 2020. Yes, for sure. It doesn't go straight up. Um, but in general, gold does very well on a recession. Uh, gold does, does well on the, you know, the months before the recession as well. Uh, because it doesn't, basically it doesn't fall as much as the other assets. Okay. And that's <laughs> so so that's, that's pretty good in terms of being a portfolio manager and trying to diversify your portfolio and having something that doesn't go uh, down as much. That's a classic reason to own gold, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Talk to us about Agnico Eagle. You have a buy on the stock. You just started covering them. Yes. And you, you, you say the lower risk jurisdictions are a thing that attracts you here. Exactly. I mean, the... Agnico Eagle has most of the mines in Canada and in developed countries. Uh, it only has an emerging market in Mexico that's about 7% of the production. So, so compared to a Barrick or a Newmont that they basically have 50% in emerging markets in some places like, you know, the, the one that you were mentioning in Latin America, in Africa, mm -hmm. there is a different risk, for sure. Um, Barrick, you favor over Newmont, even though the stock has over the past few years lagged Newmont. Um, first off, tell us why do you think Barrick has, has fallen behind Newmont at stock price over the past few years? Barrick didn't used to pay much of a dividend, and that has changed recently. So if you look in the past, uh, there was a big difference between the, new, the dividend Newmont used to pay versus Barrick. The other thing is, um, 
if you look you know, forward, um, I would say that one of the big advantages of Barrick is that it has mines with higher grade than Newman. Mm -hmm. So there's like a 50% difference in grade. One yeah. is 1.7 versus 1.1 grams per ton. That's, so that's, that's proven reserves, I think in you're talking reserves. about. Yeah, yeah. So when you have proven reserves, it means that your cost should be lower. You know, all things being equal. Uh, because you, you basically have to mine 40 or 50% less ore to get that kind of gold, the same amount of gold. So, and, and when you look at the cost, uh, the, the, the cost per ounce has been better for Barrick than, than, than for Newman. Was it just the dividend, do you think, that, um, that uh, in, um, enamored people to Newmont stock? I mean, is, is a dividend that big for gold investors? It was partly that. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if you look at, at Barrick uh, before Mark Bristow, uh, it had quite a few issues. Uh, Mark Bristow you know, came, came in, in 2018, but before that, Barrick w w had trouble, basically, as a stock. So I think a lot of people have still in the mind, OK, Barrick, well, you know, we didn't do very well in, in that period. Maybe th there was a discount. but. Uh, when you look at what Mark has been able to do the last four or five years, uh, you know, it, the stock has done a lot better and, and uh, the fundamentals are, are a lot stronger than before. Uh, they are not uh, impairing assets all the time as they used to. <laughs> Yeah, so well, Pasqualama. Pasqualama was, was a big there. issue, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so all of those are behind. Now, when you, when you look at Newman, Newman has problems in, in, in Peru with Yanacocha. Yeah, so they have a big re reclamation and clean up that site, basically. Cost. Yes. So, so last year, they did an impairment of $1.5 billion. And if you look at uh, what they, they submitted to the New York Stock Exchange, the 10Q, uh, there, is a, a, there is a mention there in the third quarter that they say, um, unless there is a change in the assumptions, we are ha going to have a material, um, a, a material impairment in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. And it's all related with those water plants in Yanacocha. That's interesting. Peru's a tough place for miners in many ways, isn't it? It is, and politically it's a difficult place as well right now.